Hello, and welcome to this episode of Registered Nurses in Primary Care. I'm your host, Emily Patton. We are privileged to have Dr. Maria Shirey with us today. Dr. Shirey is the Associate Dean for Clinical and Global Partnerships and Jane H. Brock Florence Nightingale Endowed Professor in Nursing at UAB School of Nursing. Dr. Shirey is also the Principal Investigator of a four-year, $2.8 million Health Resources and Services Administration grant project titled Building a Resilient Primary Care Registered Nurse Workforce for Chronic Disease Prevention and Control in Alabama. Welcome, Dr. Shirey. Thank you, Emily. I'm happy to be here. So, Dr. Shirey, can you tell us what exactly is primary care nursing? So, Emily, let me start by sharing what primary care is. It is the first level of care that individuals receive, and it is focused on wellness and prevention. And so what that means is that registered nurses in primary care are focused on wellness and prevention. So what exactly does that look like? A registered nurse in primary care um, working in the field will be involved in health assessments. It, they will be involved in terms of determining, uh, determining potential risk uh, for chronic diseases and hopefully helping patients to coach them and to teach them in terms of how to prevent those uh, diseases. A uh, registered nurse in primary care, once an individual has reach the point of perhaps we've, um, we've uh, connected with the patient beyond their um, period of window where you can prevent a disease. It's to really facilitate self-care management in terms of chronic diseases. And so how can we better equip um, individuals with knowledge so they can care for themselves? It involves um, assisting with coordination of care. Um, Individuals may uh, get admitted to the hospital, uh, they then come home. How can a primary care nurse facilitate how that individual uh, best accesses resources, um, is uh, prepared uh, for uh, caring for himself, and if, if the person needs um, additional coaching and training for the family to assist um, with care coordination. And the reason why that's important is that when you're moving from one level of care to the other, um, that is when we lose pieces of important information. And when you have an individual such as a primary care nurse who is well equipped in facilitating that care coordination, we have individuals who are connected to resources and we can prevent a readmission um, to the hospital that can be very costly. Registered nurses in primary care are also involved in quality and safety in care. And so that's manifested in several ways. Um, They assist um, patients uh, with medication reconciliation. So somebody who perhaps may have been in the hospital who then comes to the ambulatory clinic the uh, registered nurse in primary care can help to identify what medications this individual might be uh, taking and ensure that they're taking the right medications, that it's the right combination, um, that perhaps they're not um, taking um, a medication that's incompatible with another. And that happens when you spend time with individuals, when you look at the medications that uh, they're taking and and you help to facilitate that understanding. Another way in which um, uh, quality and safety is manifested is in being involved in uh, rapid cycle quality improvement projects in their own ambulatory environments so that we can facilitate care that is safe every time. And then importantly, registered nurses in primary care are leaders and um, they are leaders in their settings, they're leaders in their communities, and they're leaders in their discipline. And so they contribute a really important um, piece of um, enhancing care for populations of individuals across the lifespan, really. So it sounds like registered nurses in primary care have some really important roles and responsibilities. Why would you say that primary care is important? Well, first of all, it's important because we have certain areas in this country 
where primary care cannot be accessed by individuals, either because the health professionals are there, are not there, or because the resources are, are not present, because perhaps hospitals may have closed, clinics have closed as a result of that, and the care is just not available. So we have an obligation really to enhance that workforce so that that workforce of primary care nurses is available to care for individuals so that we can prevent um, chronic diseases. And if the chronic diseases do happen, that we can help facilitate care coordination and quality care that really maximizes the ability of individuals to care for themselves and it really enhances quality of life. And the way this all translates is that it reduces the cost of care um, to our nation. Uh, it improves access to care to individuals who otherwise would have, a, have to travel uh, miles um, to get the care that they need. Um, it enhances uh, their health care outcomes. Um, and, and as a result of that, um, we are contributing to the well-being of the nation. Here um, in Alabama, um, we have been privileged uh, to receive um, an important grant uh, that you mentioned when you um, introduced our segment Yes, here. can you tell us a little bit more about Certainly, that? Certainly, I'm happy to do that. Um, we were funded um, with a grant from, um, from HRSA, Health Resources um, and Services Administration. It's a federal grant that helps us to um, enhance capacity. In other words, our grant allows us to produce more registered nurses in primary care. And we're producing those nurses through educational experiences that are offered here at our School of Nursing and that are enhanced with field experiences with our partners in a variety of areas uh, here in the state of Alabama. We're focusing primary primarily here in the state of Alabama. We're fortunate with this grant that we're partnered with our affiliate partner, Tuskegee University, and this allows us to really penetrate the state of Alabama. Um, and one of the things that we've been fortunate to have is multiple sites in the state where our students can spend time being mentored by registered nurses in primary care. Um, and they're able to really reinforce the content that they're learning in, in the academic uh, portion um, of the course that we were able to create by virtue of this grant. And uh, we were funded for four years, so our goal is, is to be able to increase the number of registered nurses um, in primary care in the state. Um, additionally, the grant has been helpful in funding um, opportunities such as this uh, segment and the series of presentations that we're doing so that we can beam these programs to the state to increase the awareness of registered nurses in primary care, to increase the knowledge base and the interest and the excitement in this important area of care that um, really has not been emphasized to the extent that it could and should uh, be emphasized, and it becomes really important, especially at a time when we have an aging population, when there is uh, really a, a great need to um, address not only those individuals with chronic diseases, but perhaps members of their family where perhaps we can help with our teaching to prevent some of those um, chronic diseases. And then lastly, we have an opportunity um, with this grant um, really um, to promote um, educational um, opportunities, not only through this segment, but also through a registered nurses and primary care summit that we will be holding um, um, here in Birmingham next spring of, of 2020 in hopes of, of really energizing um, nurses to really um, learn more about primary care, and move into that field. Mm -hmm. So this grant is certainly supporting some very important work that's going on in the field of primary care at this point. Um, mm -hmm. So are there any additional resources that you could recommend for anyone that might be interested in primary care nursing? Yes, certainly there are a number of resources that are available. First of all, um, I would encourage our viewers to 
um, look at our website. We have a specific section that's designated to the Registered Nurses in Primary Care um, Scholars Program, which is uh, part of this grant. And then there's a series of really classic articles that talk about um, registered nurses in primary care, um, what their contribution is, what the need for, for them is, and ultimately, how do you prepare these baccalaureate prepared registered nurses in primary care to function at the top of their license where we are maximizing their capabilities to enhance the health and well-being of Alabamians. Well, this has been very informative, Dr. Shari. Thank you for joining us today. And thank you all for joining us as well. We hope you join us for our next episode of Registered Nurses and Primary Care.